Now, how do you fall from grace? The Mosaic law gets circumcised to conform to the law. That will make you fall from grace. Get circumcised in order to conform to the law. Observe Sabbath and holy days as a way to conform to the law of Moses. Eat kosher for the purpose of pleasing God. Now, there's nothing wrong with eating good food, safe food, clean food. But if you eat it in order to gain favor with God or to please God because you think that that law still covers you, then you're falling from grace. Wear vestments ordained for Israel. That is, a little head covering or a prayer shawl or underwear with strings on it. Anything you choose to do in order to please God, like you think the Jews did it, will make you fall from grace. Abstain from things unclean under the law, like catfish and shrimp and lobster. Seek righteousness by the law. Just use the law as a means to be righteous and you fall from grace. Exalt the law to a place of prominence. That is, incorporate the law into your Christian worship and elevate it with your words, your symbols, and your acts of worship, and you are falling from grace. I know this is hard for some of you to hear, but it's your time you heard it. Now, this is Paul's first missionary journey. You'll see where he left from Antioch of Syria, top right corner, and he traveled down across the ocean through uh, Patmos and uh, Cyprus and then moved up into what is called Galatia. And there he made several cities and established churches within a year's time in Antioch of Syria, different Antioch, and uh, Lystra, Iconium, Derbe, all those places, he built strong churches. And there Paul proclaimed the gospel to them. 39 to 46 AD, he was on and off in Antioch of Syria, where Christians were first called Christians. So Paul there ministered after he came out of Arabia, on and off different places, but he had contact in Antioch for that period of time from 39 to 46 AD. In 46 AD, the church in Antioch sends Paul and Barnabas to Galatia, where I showed you the map. Now, Barnabas was from Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem heard about the goings-on up in Syria and sent Barnabas up there, and there Paul met Barnabas, and uh, they developed a real liking for one another and a desire to minister further. So the church there sends them out as missionaries. These are the first that we know of sent missionaries in the New Testament. And so they go up to this heathen region and take the gospel. Gentiles in Galatia received the gospel in 47 AD. That was Antioch of Galatia, Poseidon of Galatia, Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. Those all received the gospel. Now, while Paul is up there in Galatia, having left the Christian church down in Antioch, the church at Jerusalem sends certain men up to Antioch. These are Jewish men. There's a Jewish church for the first 10 years in Jerusalem. Sends them up to visit, and Peter goes up to Antioch in Paul's absence in 47 AD. So James sends others up, and the Jews command the Gentiles, these are Gentile converts in Syria, to observe the law of Moses. These people were already well established for about 10 years and been taught by the apostle Paul, who'd been taught by God directly. And they come along saying, that's not enough. You need to incorporate into your worship Sabbath days, feast days, holy days. You need to wear a little covering on your head when you pray. You need to do all these things because that's the way Jesus worshiped and that's the way the apostles worshiped and that's the way all the Old Testament saints worshiped and you need to do that as well. Now the apostle Paul returns to Antioch to discover they've been messing with his churches. Barnabas takes the side of the Judaizers, Paul's missionary buddy. He falls for the era that Peter has fallen into. Peter was... Uh, eating catfish and barbecue with the Gentiles, relaxed. He'd already received word that what God calls clean, don't you call unclean. So he knew that back of his head. He didn't understand the full interpretation of it. 
But he was not living like a Jew among the Gentiles. He was a pretty lax Jew. He wasn't looking for kosher food. But then when some Jews come up from Jerusalem, he jumps up from the table where he was eating barbecue ribs, <laughs> I would think. That's what I'd eat if I'd never got to eat them. And he goes and gets at a Jewish table and starts eating kosher. Paul gets there in time to see that thing going on. And Paul rebukes Peter severely and publicly, and Barnabas as well. So Paul rebukes them both. So the church at Jerusalem hears about all of this. The Bible said there was much disputing and dissension. So Paul and Barnabas were arguing, and the Jews coming up from Jerusalem were arguing, and some of these guys have been saved eight or ten years in, uh, uh, there in Syria, and so they had some views. They were arguing. What should they do? Now, apparently that never got worked out because people are still arguing over it. So the church at Jerusalem convenes to consider the matter in Acts chapter 15. This is the first Jerusalem synod or council that we know of. So they get all the elders available and all the apostles available, and Paul and Barnabas go there as well. So this is a big get-together to decide whether or not and what a Gentile should have to do. What do we require Gentiles who get saved to do regarding the laws of Moses? They concluded after much debating that the Gentiles are not required to observe the law of Moses. Not required. Three things they put on them to do. Number one, they were to abstain from meats offered to idols. Now, you know, that's not, that may have been part of the Mosaic law, but it was also God's law before Moses ever shows up. Secondly, they command them to abstain from eating blood. God, God had that rule way back in Genesis. Eating blood or things strangled because the blood would be in it. So that's not a ceremonial or a moral issue. That has something to do that we've not discovered yet that science will uncover about the transference of animal cells into the human body and brain when humans eat blood that's not uh, cooked, it's not processed. I don't know what it means. The life is in the blood. There's something in the blood that's alive. I have some ideas. I don't have time to go into it. So they would abstain from eating blood, not, part, not because it's part of the Mosaic law, but because it's part of something by nature that concerns God. And they would abstain from fornication. That's all sexual sins which was clearly marked and delineated long before Moses came along. That's the three things that James, the head of the church in Jerusalem, Peter, the 11 other apostles, all the elders in Jerusalem, elders that came up from Syria, all together in a big synod, their conclusion was that no Gentile should have any of the law of Moses, should not have to be under any of them at all. Nothing should be required of them other than Jesus Christ except for these three things. Now, that's not my conclusion. It's not my interpretation. That is the historical, biblical, Holy Spirit-inspired interpretation of what is required of a Gentile who comes to Christ. You add anything to that, you're disagreeing with James, Paul, Peter, all the apostles, and all the elders. So there was no command for them to observe Torah, no command to keep the Sabbath, not Saturday, not Sunday. A lot of Christians that would take my position are weak on it in that they say you don't keep Sabbath, but you keep Sunday. No, sir. If you transfer the authority of Sabbath keeping to another day of the week, which I don't know how you do that, then you'd have to transfer all that went with it, which would be dying if you pick up a few sticks and build a fire. They were not commanded to tithe. I guarantee you if it had been a bunch of Baptists having ascended down there, they'd have said they'd tell them to tithe. They have to take the first fruits off of it. That's for another subject. Observe feast days. Nope, nope, didn't require them to do that. Wear paraphernalia. <laughs> I coined that word. Paraphernalia, you know. So if you pray with you. Yeah. That's, that's a new word. It'll be in uh, the dictionary next week. At least you'll see it on Wikipedia. Uh, and he didn't require them to eat kosher. Not at all. That means you can eat anything except blood. We're going to Acts 15 and read about that synod that took place. So you'll see that I just didn't kind of put a few things together. 
Now, elsewhere, Paul describes his confrontation with Peter. I think it's in Philippians. But here, he discusses the synod. And certain men which came down from Judea, Jerusalem, taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, they were pretty heavy on that. And therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. Had a big argument. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem, because it's higher in elevation, unto the apostles and elders about this question. So they're going to go to the number one authorities, the original apostles and elders, sending Paul and Barnabas down there to find out what do they say in Jerusalem. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. People didn't know it. The Jews saved up there, didn't know it yet. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Now remember, this is 18 years after the beginning of the church. They're just now discovering the salvation of the Gentiles. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. And there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, so they had denominations already, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So they had to do both. Paul said, beware of the concision circumcisers. And to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, now that was a lot of argument, I told you, I don't want to hear that again. You've said that twice already. My turn to speak. I've been in some meetings like that. Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. It's interesting to me that Peter doesn't reveal any of his uh, falling away. Uh, apparently he, he was convinced pretty quickly by Paul. Now, he's talking about Cornelius' household when he's told to go down and uh, has the vision of the sheep being left down, let down there in the book of Acts. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, because they spoke in tongues, and it came down like flames of fire, and the place shook, wind blew, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, he's saying to these Judaizers, why tempt ye God? Now, in the wilderness, when they tempted God, God sent fiery serpents to kill them. Here they're tempting God by daring him, by putting something up and saying, this is your will, this is your commandment, this is your rule, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples. A yoke is what you put on an ox's head or a mule to pull a load. The yoke he's talking about is the Mosaic law. All right, pull it, do it which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. That's why there were miracles and wonders in such a degree in those days. It was necessary to unify the church and to convince them that the Holy Spirit was indeed accepting Gentiles. And after they had held their peace, James answered. So he's the last one up. He's been sitting there doing like this. You know how, how a big guy does. He's just sitting there like this. You know, he's the boss. He's, he's not saying much. He's kind of letting him argue it out. He's above all that. He's sitting there waiting. And finally, when they've all kind of gotten tired and exhausted, been going on five or six hours, he said he, he knew what he's going to do all the time. He knew what his mind was, but he had to let them argue it out. So he stands up. They pay attention. James is standing up. And after they held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Wherefore, my sentence is, with authority, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, from fornication, and from things strangled and from blood. When you strangle an animal, the blood stays in it. You don't bleed it. So strangled and blood's the same thing. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greetings to the brethren which are in of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Now, they sent it to the Gentiles. They didn't send it to the Jews. 
For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. So people actually came from the church. In other words, the church at Jerusalem thought they're solid believers. Thought that they would be of use up in Antioch. They sent them out, but they used the wrong words. Saying to you, you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. He said, we didn't send them with that message. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. They didn't really know Barnabas and Paul very well. They did not spend any time with them, but they got to know them in that couple, three days. Men have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. Said We kind of sent a delegation up there. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. He saw the law as a burden that they would not lay upon them. That you abstain from meats offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled and fornication. From which if you keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare you well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they gathered the multitude together, they delivered them. And read, and Judas and Silas, the prophets, spoke to them, exhorted the brethren with many words, and confirmed them. 